This is the Surly Grognards for June 9th, 2014. This is Peter Bowman, and as usual, I'm joined by my good friend and co-host, Eric Carlson. How are you doing tonight, Eric? I'm doing all right. Excellent. So, um, because uh, I got very little sleep last night, um, <laughs> due to my own stupidity and road work being done outside my house, uh, or something, some sort of construction was going on, I don't know exactly what it was, but it woke me up far too early. Um... I didn't come. Up with, I couldn't come up with a show topic today. Um, I'm just a bit frazzled. Beyond um, rehashing one of our classic things, what the hell are we, we have we been up to in yeah. gaming? Because <laughs> it's been a while since we talked about that. We've talked a little bit about here and there about things we've been doing, but I figured a bunch has changed since the last time we talked about it. We might as well. Yeah, we could do that. Excellent. We'll do that. So um, beyond uh, the Iron Kingdoms game that you've been running and the so what have you been up to in terms of gaming, in terms of tabletops so far, Eric, recently? Tabletops? Well, there's the, there's the, the, the whatchamacallit, the, um, the Ankenims game I've been running. Yep. And the, the games I've been playing with you on Saturdays. Right, so that's, you know, the, that's two Iron Kingdom games, because, you yep. know. And, and. Mutant and Masterminds yeah. and Slayers. Yep. All of which are fun. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely starting to feel the, the, the strain of, of Iron Kingdom. Uh, of running a game. Luckily, I've got someone to to run opposite me. So <laughs> yep, yep. Thank yep. you, by the way. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> but um, I also started collecting Pharaoh for um for Warmer Hordes. Ooh, cool. Which uh, there's Pharaoh are, are, are pig monsters. They're, they're, they're pigmen in, in the the War Machine universe, and they they sort of fill sort of a mercenary role on, on the tabletop. And um dude they're they're hilarious. <laughs> uh -huh. So they're filling your scavenage for war machine, I take it. Basically, yeah, especially seeing as their their heavy war beasts are cybernetic pig monsters. Yep, yep, yep. With, with like steam engines sticking out of their backs and like flamethrower arms and robot arms. Yeah. So they're cyber pig <laughs> monsters. Oh my god. That's it's, hilarious. Yes. <laughs> wow. And one of the um, one of their warlocks is um, named Lord Carver, bringer of most massive destruction. The third Esquire. Say the whole thing, please. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he's basically Cobra Commander for, for pig monsters. <laughs> he that's, really wants to be cool. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so, well, again, there's the games that we're both involved in. Uh, the yeah. game I'm going to be start. All right, so the game I'm going to be running opposite Eric's Iron Kingdoms game on Tuesdays um, is special. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because I had a notion, I had, I had a silly sort of spitball campaign idea, and I thought, you know, this could be kind of a fun thing to run for a little while. While we're waiting, well, you know, because we're what's actually probably going to happen is that our friend Hannah is going to be running a Supers game. Yes. Um, which we'll probably which talk I, I'm actually pretty excited about because I've always wanted to play a uh, Supers game with Hannah, and um, she's never run one, so it's going to be fun to see how she she handles it. Yep. So, uh, but we'll get to that in a moment uh, because I do we do I sh we should talk about our characters. Yes. <laughs> but uh, so the game I'm going to be running is I'm using GURPS because it's a system we system we it, all it's know. A, it's a it's a quick dirty sim system that we all know and lets us do pretty much anything. Right. And so I decided to... The notion I had basically was mo smushing genres together, because I like doing that sometimes. Um, and decided, so what if we were to take a crew of a, you know, a fairly typical sci-fi adventuring group, you know, crew on a exploration ship that is looking for, you know, you know planets to, be, to colonize and such. And then what if their ship got, you know, encountered some sort of precursor tech type thing, and it was disabled and they were forced to crash land in some way, shape, or form on a planet, or something like that. Maybe or a Dyson Sphere. Dyson or Sphere, or, or Ring or World, or something. Uh, and it turns out that the planet effect, effectively, the planet that they're on is, in fact, a typical Western fantasy world. So there are dwarves and elves and magic. And the player characters, uh, are all basically, you know, sci-fi characters who have some sci-fi tech with them, which yeah. will only last so long. 
and what will happen from there. And that's sort of the general concept I came up with. I went straight for comedy with my character. Yes, you did. <laughs> so we decided the the, uh, the it was taking place in the same universe as the old Pirates game. So same ra same species and races and everything. And um, I decided to play the same race as my old pirate character. Um, only 80, 80, the total stereotype of his species. So he's like this, this big hulking bureaucrat who's all about like making sure the reports get done properly and keeping track of, of, of people's accounts and all that other stuff. I'm totally going to play him like the red swing line stapler guy from Office Space. Cross the main character from falling down. Because I gave him like bloodlust and bad temper. And <laughs> it turns out that he should have been a barbarian. All, he all should have been a barbarian. It, it's just the idea of this guy stuck at a crappy office job whose actual destiny is to go forth and murder and conquer. <laughs> He should have been born Conan the Barbarian. But he should said, have been. He was born Milton. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be an interesting, bizarre game. Yeah. Um, and I have no idea how long it's going to last, but it should yeah. be fun. Anna's character is, like, doing the whole, like, tech, tech, science, engineer uh, thing, who um, turns out is actually remarkably magically adept, and have all kinds of trouble mar marrying the two concepts. <laughs> yep. Uh, Leland's character is basically a... He's sort of the guy they bring along for first contact situations. He also happens to be a priest. Yeah. Um, he's a missionary. Yep. Uh, Chris's character is basically, basically working security effectively. Yeah, and, and I think the premise was that she she's the only one that's actually going to be any use at first. <laughs> right. Uh, she's a... You know, she was a ranger. She, she's in the, to be a member of the rangers. Uh, but you know, one of the their, their training things is to go along and do the sort do that sort of stuff on a uh, on like a, a exploration ship as training. And Will's character, I think, was the ship's engineer. Yeah, I think so. So this is going to be bizarre, <laughs> but it should be a hoot. Yeah, I took uh, like two levels of great sword. The idea being, it was the Fres equivalent of Tai Chi for my stress. You see. <laughs> It turns out that if you actually use it to hit people with it, you release your stress much better. Yeah, it turns out if you speed up the movements and actually hit people with the stick, <laughs> it's actually a pretty effective martial art. <laughs> kind of like Tai Chi, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there's that. Um, uh, also, for me, I'm going to be running uh, the our weekly D&D &D game. Uh, Thursdays finally wrapped up, and it was uh, a glorious ending to a long-running campaign. And it was uh, I enjoyed it immensely, despite it being second edition AD&D. Again, it's the a good campaign with a good game master and good players can, can oh, yeah. trump almost any system. Definitely, like um, I had that experience with, with uh, the first ed D&D. Like, right, loads of fun, except when the actual system had to rear its ugly head. <laughs> But yeah, basically, no. I'm glad it's done because I'm just tired of second edition AD&D. Um, I'll miss the, miss the actual campaign, but uh, to a degree, because it means that I'm running now. Although I don't mind, because I'm running Iron Kingdoms. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that game is actually, plot-wise, very similar to the one I'm running on stream. Uh, sort of the general framework. It's different because of the characters involved and the type of adventuring company they're doing, so it's changing a lot of the particulars, but the same basic premise. They're currently wandering through. Also, because we're doing it, you know, face-to-face, -face, it's a little bit slower. Uh, you know, because we have more time. We banter more and such. Right. So they're, they're, they are working their way through the town. The first town that you guys went to. You know, with the undead in the book. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, you're sending them there. Uh huh. Oh, that's gonna be fun. <laughs> yeah, well, they they are they have gotten basically to the mansion at this point. Okay. They found out some things that you guys didn't find out. Well, we were. <laughs> yeah, we. If I remember what you described, they're much more. Um, uh, they're much more investigating, and they we're, are. We're, we're we're there for killing folks. <sighs> well, you're a mercenary company. They're investigators. I mean. Yeah. Big difference there. 
I mean, their biggest, pure, their most pure combat monster is the uh, is combat character is the Man at Arms Bounty Hunter, who's a troll. Which actually isn't a bad one. Oh, it's a good. Oh, yeah. The fun thing is that he basically decided he was his character was a, a gutter snipe to a certain degree. He grew up a street kid basically, so he's his right. starting equipment is very limited. Gotcha. So he, his his weapon was a club. <laughs> And he's been upgrading with gear he's been finding in town as he's been going. Nice. It's like, ooh, this city watch zombie had a greatsword. I'll switch to that for a while. Oh, wait, that guy had a halberd. I'll switch to that now. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's been, it's been fun. Uh, but yeah, it's been really interesting seeing the sort of different take on things. The same sort of basic plot for an adventure from a completely different point of view of characters. Yeah. Also, uh, my friend Joey's character is, oh my god, the skills. He's an intellectual gobber investigator spy. A what spy? Intellectual gobber investigator spy. Oh, Jesus. And he took genius as his uh, starting uh, archetype benefit. So yeah, so he's so got all, all the boosted rolls. His int, int rolls are boosted, his perception rolls are boosted, and his agility rolls are boosted. Yeah. So, but... <laughs> 90% of his non-combat rolls are boosted. It's just like, oh my god. Helps make up for the fact that the Gobber's stat line is just crippled. Yeah. Yeah, their, their stat line's not very good. Uh, I, 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 Joey pointed out something I didn't notice. Do you know that goblins don't get it, don't get an increase in their ma- goblins don't get an increase in their maximum intelligence at, at at veteran at a veteran either? Really, they don't. You no, know, no, I was no, it does. That, they, that goblins would get increased uh, perception and intelligence because they always struck me as being no. It's just their perception. Sorry, the intel- the, intel- the intellect does go up. Okay. Yeah, perception goes is caps at four at heroic, four at veteran, and then five at epic. It's Which is terrible. too lower than humans or Iosins or Nis. No, Nis only cap at R six. But yeah, at, when you get to epic tier, goblin max defense is actually lower than that of human or uh, Iosin. And they're they, to make up for that, they're f- more fragile. Wait, why is this fair? Yeah. Uh, poor gobbers. Yeah, they really got the short end of the stick. And they're still awesome because they're gobbers, but... <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I may... I don't know, I may actually end up... Uh, Recombobulating a bit. Yeah, I might just tweak their... I might just tweak their... their the, the, that perception line to, you know, basically four, five, six, and I think that would be at least reasonable. Yeah, that, that seems, sounds a lot more reasonable to me. The only thing I think well, I'm honestly a little surprised they can't get their... bump their perception up to eight at um, Epic. Yeah, I'm too. I, they, they they need something. At any rate, uh, so that's what I'm going to be doing on Thursdays is Iron Kingdoms with that crew. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, the, what's coming up for us in terms of on Tuesdays, the other thing that's coming up is Hannah's upcoming at some point, we're not sure exactly when, uh, Supers game, which we're going to be using GURF Supers for, which is a yep. system I've not played since high school. Yeah. I've not played a Supers game in GURPS since high school. I like, like I said earlier, I'm kind of excited about that because um, I've always wanted to play a Supers game in a Supers game with Hannah. Yep, she's a giant comic nerd. She and is going to be, and she's going to be the 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 game master. And she's never run one before, so I, I'm I'm curious to see where she's going to go with that. And uh, yeah, she is more into comic books than either Eric or I are, and we're yeah. both into comic books. I'm I'm less so than I used to be. Her w- her windows are blocked up with stacks of graphic novels. Oh, well, not anymore. They actually put well, those uh, Yeah, they, they, they need to make room for the fan, because summer's coming. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was... Uh, th- th- she she owns a lot of comic books. She works at a comic book store. She works at a comic shop, so it's not it's not unusual. But, yeah. Uh, she she knows a lot about comic, comic books. Um, yeah, so that's what's been going on sort of in terms of role-playing games for us. Uh, I, I, but our character for Hannah's Surfers game, uh, I do oh, want to yes. talk about this a little bit because I, I, it, <sighs> I'm really amused by your character. I, I, I love my character. I, I'm so looking forward to playing this guy, just because he is such an atypical super, Supers character. 
Yes. So, uh, first off, the basic premise for Hannah's game is super people with superpowers are fairly rare and um, are at this point somewhat distrusted because of two incidents that basically... Um, Basically, two hero, two two people with powers. Uh, one during the Cuban, sort of what would have been the Cuban Missile Crisis equivalent in Cuba during the Bay of Pigs thing, and then once recently in a major metropolis. I don't think she decided what city yet. Um, but both their power, they lost control of their powers. They ran away and caused the caused basically they exploded and destroyed the city they were in. Well, that's what happens when you're nuclear powered. Yeah. Well. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so no one's entirely sure why superpowers exist, and it's sort of until somewhat recently, it was something of an urban legend. That there were a lot of there were there, there were more than a very few people with powers. Yeah, the number's been increasing, and people are slowly realizing this. And so there the are basic PSAs and stuff on TV, right? <laughs> yeah, because the government started agencies that you know, if you know someone who has paranormal abilities, you know, help us help them. Psychor is everywhere for your convenience. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the and it's apparently able to detect some ways, like genetically, that people have powers or something like that. I forget exactly how Hannah worded it, but so basically, our characters are all going to have been basically discovered by the government and basically being brought in, and then it'll be up to us to decide whether we're going to work with the government or bugger off and do our own thing. I'm like, I, I kind of want to know that so I know which way to jump with the character. Because there are a couple ways I could go with them easily. Yeah, I... will be kind of fundamental. <laughs> well, I, I will say my character's instinct would be to, to stick with the government because... Okay. Um, well, they have all the information and technology that might allow me to figure out what the hell's going on. Right. It might keep me, keep, keep me from doing things, you know, keep, you know... Yeah. Because I mean, the whole sort of, you know, I don't... It's like, what the fuck's going on? Because my character... So, yeah. Um, so let's talk about your character. Ah, oh, God. Can we talk about your character first? <laughs> sure, we can talk about my character first. <laughs> because my character, I, I think he works better in contrast. Okay. So, my character is this skinny-ass college kid from New Hampshire who was in, in Boston for school. He's kind of kind of a creepy goober, um, and absolutely loves his powers. I think the fucking coolest thing ever. Um... All of his powers revolve around the, the control and manipulation of his shadow. Um, it, yeah, I, I built it so it like counted as additional limbs and was, it had a, like um, elongation and all this other stuff. So basically, he sort of stands around and plays on his phone while his shadow beats up bad guys. <sighs> yep. Um. Um. And he thinks it's the coolest thing ever. Uh, and he's got like weaknesses ver um, vers and vulnerabilities versus bright lights, and therefore he hates dance clubs, which another character in the the game loves. <laughs> right. And he, he um, he's uh, there's a there's an internet meme built up around him, the sort of one of those, those creepy pasta things, kind of like the Slender Man about the Shadow Man, the shadow that comes alive and attacks people that if you've been doing wrong. <laughs> Right. But you can also turn into turn yourself into yeah, a shadow. Yeah, I can also. also turn into shadow, and I can generate... Um, I can deepen the shadows into the straight-up darkness around me, which is how I've been keeping myself hidden. I just, I'm, I just make it dark around me so nobody can see me. <laughs> right. Um, and you absolutely adore your powers. Yeah, I use my powers at every opportunity. Need that right. bottle opened? I'll use my shadow. <laughs> right. Uh, our friend Leland's character is an ex-boxer who's been punched in the head one too many times and developed psychic powers. He's a he's a fairly power, reasonably powerful telepath. Yes. Um, Chris's character is um, this girl who is just Chris's incredibly lucky. Is also a college student, <laughs> right? Who's who's got who's got who's you know got very high, is very agile, very quick, fairly strong, trained in martial arts, and is immensely lucky. Um, for various reasons, um, I believe it involves quant quantum sh quantum shifts and such. Uh, yeah. But yeah, she doesn't she doesn't realize she has superpowers because she just thinks she's just a little bit lucky. And our friend Will hasn't finished his character yet, so. Yeah, Will Will hasn't figured his out yet. But most of the character players are all fairly well adjusted with their powers in some way, shape, or form. Then there's my character. 
<laughs> my character is. Uh, we'll start. We'll first start off with what he is outside of his powers. He is a surgeon. He's a, he's a, he's a surgeon. He's you know he's a doctor. He very smart, skilled surgeon. Not like he's not like a like a like a world round surgeon. He's you know he's only recently started, so he's not super wealthy or anything like that. Um, and everything like that. Uh, it turns out, however, that he has immense regenerative powers. Um, he he can regenerate. It basically, it's nearly impossible to kill him. It turns out. Um, so he regenerates very quickly. Uh, he can regrow lost limbs, digits, like anything. You know, he can regrow basically anything that's cut off. Uh, he's immune to poison and disease. Uh, it turns out that his powers are basically based around biokinesis, so he can actually heal with his touch or cause people's muscles to lock up so they can't move. Um, also, uh, it turns out that he has that because it, he didn't have this before his powers manifested, or he realized he had them, they first started working. But uh, he has low pain threshold, <laughs> which means that anything that hurts him makes it hurts even more, so he has even bigger penalties. He hates his powers with a passion. <laughs> they have completely and utterly ruined his life. His government has drug him away from the job he loves. Off into doing this other stuff. And he's never going to have a normal life again. And he just absolutely, deeply... is like it, His life has been ruined and he hates it. Yeah, which is funny. I, I'm just really amused by all the ridiculous, like, regenerative, like healing capabilities and low pain threshold. Oh my god, why does it hurt so much? <sighs> well, you know, he discovered his powers literally when he was mugged and shot and was left for dead, and then snapped back to life minutes later going, Oh, my everything hurts! <laughs> yeah, I bought him some damage resistance that's basically defined as, like, damage that doesn't exceed it is basically stuff that the body heals back instantly. Right. Um, I'll probably just play it as if that I'm actually taking penalty. Me mechanically, it would mean that anything that doesn't get past his DR wouldn't actually give him the penalties for his low pain threshold. Mm. I'll probably play it that he still take. I'll probably still inflict some penalties on myself despite that. Right. Because it, because of what it's mechanically representing. Because it's funny. <laughs> Let's face facts. You're gonna do it because it's funny. <laughs> Not just because it's funny, but because I think it makes sense. Yeah. Um. So yeah, my character actually potentially is a terrifying combat monster. It's just that he has wants nothing to do with it. <laughs> I mean, he's not like his, I mean, he's not very strong and he's not very dexterous. In theory, I, he because his powers are about biokinesis. He could use his powers, his touch powers, to cause physical harm, but he would never do that because he's a doctor. Because Hippocratic oath, right? <laughs> that's one of his. That's one of his uh, disadvantages. You know, he's taken the Hippocratic oath, and he's a firm believer in it. First, do no harm. That's boring. <laughs> Strangling isn't harm, is it? Oh my god, yes it is, you asshole! <laughs> well, I'm not doing it. <laughs> your shadow isn't. You control your shadow, you jerk. Stop right. it. You're cutting up blood for his brain. You'll have brain damage. Well, he was going to shoot you. You hate that. <laughs> you, you, I hate you so much. I'd have survived. God, I hate my life. <laughs> I love it. I, our characters are going to be a lot of fun to play off of each other, I they're, think. They're going to be a lot of fun to play off of each other. <laughs> I imagine he'll eventually warm up to everything that's going on around him, but... Uh... Right. Yeah, I've also decided this character is like really big into like conspiracy theories and, and internet memes. So, Yeah. <sighs> Either the government's all out to get us, or holy crap, the government's out to get us. I'm going to find out about the mole people. <sighs> so obviously, there are mole people. Right, of course there are. <sighs> Man, my character's also like a genetic. Like he knows, like he, I mean, he's super smart. Is the thing is, is other. I mean, it's, it could almost be classified as a superpower. I mean, he's not like beyond human norm intelligence, but he's like, right. really smart. And he's beyond being a surgeon, which is what he wanted to do. He also knows like genetics and psychology and all this other useful stuff. So I've got a lot of useful skills. And like uh, Chris pointed out that I'd probably be like someone who would actually start working at exactly what's going on with superpowers. Mm. I'm just not sure it actually occurred to him at first. Actually, it might. I'm just not sure he cares enough. 
Actually, he might start researching how to get rid of them. But that that would be terrible. Powers are awesome. <laughs> Why wouldn't you want to have powers? <laughs> You might explode and take out a city. Well, oh, come on. It was like a nuclear twice. guy and a guy with concussion powers. It's happened twice. Neither of us did any of it. Neither of us can do any of that. Besides, dude, watch me open this beer. <laughs> Sigh. <sighs> but yes. <laughs> this is going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> This is such an atypical superhero, super character for me. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> I'm going way off type for me. Well, it's kind of like when... Uh, you'll probably actually really enjoy it. Because it's oh, I will. like when I, I did um, Dr. Arcane. I was like, holy crap. This is a lot more fun than I thought it would be. <laughs> oh, I usually do enjoy it when I go off type. Uh, yeah. Like, I, Bob, is not a typical, Bob is not a typical character for me from the uh, Pirates game. That's true also, yeah. But I enjoyed him. He was a lot of fun. I mean, he partially was. Like, every character I have has some elements of stuff I tend to enjoy. Mm. Like, I enjoy playing smart smart characters and such, so that's one of the reasons I'm playing this guy. You know, I like I like playing skill char characters based around skills, again. But I also like playing actual, like, you know, I, I really enjoy playing big damn heroes. I'm, I really yep. I get a kick out of it. He, and this guy is not. <laughs> yeah, this guy is pretty against type mechanically for me also, because... He's actually really weedy physically. I yep. mean, he, he's dodgy as all hell, but he's not strong unless he's uh, like, directly using a shadow for something. And you're not even super strong there, you're just strong. Yeah, not even super strong, just strong. <laughs> so yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a weird game, I think. It should be a lot of fun. I really am looking yeah. forward to it. I also am really looking forward to this because it's also not a typical Supers game in general. Yeah. And it's sort of almost like Supers meet, meets X-Files to a certain degree. Which could be really fun. <laughs> Will be probably a lot of fun, actually. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I have no idea where exactly Hannah's going with this, but I'm so looking forward to seeing where it goes. So looking forward to it. It should be a lot of fun. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Uh, what else have you... What, what other gaming stuff have you been up to? Um, well, video game-wise, I picked up Wildstar last week. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually really enjoying it. Excellent. So, uh... Oh. I have I played a little bit of the beta, but uh, I don't know a lot about it. So, okay, why don't you fill some people in? All right. So the 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 deal with Wild Stars is a it's a new MMO from the this company called Carbine. Um, premise is you found the uh, supposed homeworld uh, of the progenitors, the the, the Elden. Ooh. And um, okay, I did not know that. Yeah. <laughs> And um, and one of the two factions that, that are playable, the Exiles or the Dominion, um, you, you play a member of one of those two factions, and you run around and figure shit out. And yeah, the Elden obviously killed themselves off with their crazy super science. Aha. Because you run into like stuff like their, their murderous kill bots, some of which are like 50 feet tall, and... Um, and like there are various like horrible experiments. There are, there are a bunch of, uh, of primitive sapient species on, on Nexus, the the, the world, their, their home world, um, that were obviously uplifted. <laughs> right. All sorts of weird um, uh, self-replicating uh, robots and, and cyber monsters. Plus, you know, you've got like those stupid exiles get in the way of my Chua domination. <laughs> uh -huh. One of the races are, are three foot tall space rats that are adorable and maniacal. <laughs> they're, they're space skaven. I love them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised. Um, there's a lot of um, combat's kind of interesting in that there's a lot of, of telegraph like Stuff something will telegraph along the ground that that's a big attack, bo both for players and mobs, and um, it's your job to dodge out of the way. <laughs> right. Um, this makes boss fights and instances really fun and frustrating at the same time. <laughs> nice. Like, yeah, I've I've seen some people doing some of them online. Uh, they looked interesting. Playing a tank. Um, one to, just want to say, 
three foot tall, adorable tanks are awesome. <laughs> so, you're, so you're playing it. Oh, of course, you're playing a tank. Of, of course, course, I'm playing a tank. I'm playing, a, I'm playing an engineer who who uh, make decent tanks, and um, with robots. <laughs> yep, that's. Uh, I'm not surprised there. And normally you're supposed to hold the mob, the, the boss, in place while everyone beats it up. That's your job as a tank. Until the mob telegraphs a giant attack. In which case, you absolutely have to dodge. Why aren't you dodging? <laughs> Why didn't you dodge that, Eric? I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot I was supposed to dodge. <laughs> dodge! Damn you, Pavlov! Yes, exactly. <laughs> Eric has been trained over many, many years of playing a moves that is a take. You stay in front of the monster no matter you stay, what. You hold the monster in place. Do not dodge. <laughs> All of Eric's tank training has been has been for naught. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there was one fight that we didn't finish last night um, where, like, the, the, the guy starts off um, just, like, raining shells down from the sky and you have to dodge the shells and then he charges you and he's got this big powered up attack that like well, will smash the ground and that section of ground for the rest of the fight is now a volcano do not stand in that section of ground oh dear god yes <laughs> then he has another phase where like from the forges that you're fighting around all these little glowing orbs come out you have to catch the orbs before they get to him or they, each one will, that he gets will double his damage <laughs> what then for the third phase, he runs up to the main forge and starts pounding on it, and buzzsaw and, and like glowing buzzsaws will come out like a friggin' bullet hell uh, game, and you have to dodge those until he gets back into the fight. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous amount of fun, and we did this, and it was so frustrating because you can't fuck up. <laughs> wow, I, I yeah. Oh god. It's one of those games where I it's I it's a combination of things that's prevented me from playing it, but yeah. yeah. It's also like got really decent customization, decent housing. Um, nothing's spectacular about it um, that or, or innovative, but it takes it's kinda like it does kinda like what WoW did like 10, 15 years ago, where it takes a bunch of ideas from other games, puts them together really well. <laughs> right. And that I, I I can't fault them for that. I really yeah. can't. It's also, you know, Chua. Also, I have a Doom Wheel. You have a doom. Oh my god, you have a doom wheel. But the my mount is it it could be a hamster ball, but I've decided it's a doom wheel. <laughs> right, of course. <laughs> yeah, so as people oh, yeah. who... I have been loving the hell out of that game, but me and MMO is like I'll obsess over them for two or three weeks and then I'll get bored and walk away from them for a while. Almost so we'll see how long I'd, uh, oh, I like unless that. it's one that really hooks you. Unless it's one that really hooks me. Yeah, uh, especially if you have got a group of people you you know and enjoy gaming with. Yeah, that, that's that's pretty much what prompted me to buy the game. Actually, yeah, a bunch of um, guys from my old Warhammer uh, Alliance were going to play the game, so I was like, "All right, I'll join you guys." I I enjoyed it enough in, in beta to to buy it and hang out with you guys. Right. So yeah, I uh, that honestly, it's if it was if there were more people who like, I'd be more tempted if there were more people I personally know. Mm. I don't really know most most people that you're play, most of the people that you're playing with. So yeah, no, no, it, and I'm not even sure how well we'd get along with them because uh, sometimes they can be jerks. They're really cool, but sometimes they can be jerks. Right. <laughs> yeah, I like I honestly like the guild was the only thing that kept me in Dark Age of Camelot as long as it did. Yeah, I mean that game. I played that game for two years, and I didn't even really like the game that much. I just empl- I just enjoyed the actual playing just playing hanging out with people yeah playing 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 the game with other other people in the guild because I because so many people I knew in real life like I like we hung out together outside yeah. of game and that was great and we had you know and I, I really enjoyed that. Uh, also, I want to state for the uh, for the that instance that we were doing last night, um, it was my friend Jared was playing a dragon warrior, so he's the big dragon monster guy. And everyone else was a chua. <laughs> it was Godzilla and a swarm of death uh, of death rats. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's funny. Oh God, I've been as as I've mentioned to you, Eric, and people on the street who watch my stream regularly know that I've been playing a lot of Star Wars: The Old Republic. Yes. Uh, so I've actually been playing my uh, Sith Inquisitor. I've just finished Chapter One. Oh, cool. Um, the reveal for what happens in Chapter One is fucking hilarious. Okay. 
So okay, so do you know much? Do you know much about what's what went on with the Sith Inquisitor storyline up to that point? Have I told you much um, about it? You've told me bits and pieces, but I don't have the the whole shebang. All right. So basically, what's happened is that you're you've been brought up from obscurity by Darth Sash, chosen as her right. apprentice after graduating from the Academy on Korriban, etc. She basically wants you to. She's having you track down these uh, old Sith relics for some big powerful ritual to make you make you make both of you more powerful, basically. Right. Woohoo! Yay! Sith more power. I want to do. Right. Exactly. Um, and so you do a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, and eventually you gather all the relics. Meanwhile, uh, when gathering the first relic on Korriban, you have to break into this tomb in the, the, the Dark Temple. Right. Uh, and uh, you run into a Force ghost. Okay. Who apparently is, is your one of your ancestors. And he starts basically giving you advice and warning you that Zash is going to betray you. Because, well, duh. Because, duh, Sith. Right. Right. I mean, this is one of those, like, yeah, I know. I mean, she's like... Endlessly complimentary towards you. She's she treats you really well. She's very nice to you almost the entire time. You are doomed, right? And so the big confrontation comes that you 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 meet up with her and like you know you can trust Darth Barris because he's constantly telling you off. <laughs> <laughs> so the big final confrontation in uh, you you meet up with her at the end of chapter one back in the Dark Temple in that place, uh, and. You meet her. She's wearing this sort of, sort of hooded cloak over, and she's not not showing her face. Big sign, problem sign number one. <laughs> right. Um, and uh, you show up there with Kemval, your your Desaad Desaad uh, lackey. Uh, and oh, right, the, uh, the the totally not a space orc that eats force users. Right. Uh, and so she's like, she eventually like reveals that she's not actually as young looking as she is. She's actually ancient as fuck and is like dying. Right. And the whole point is that her whole plan is that she's basically going to steal your body. Of course. <laughs> because, well, duh. And so you have to fight her, and then you beat her, because, duh. But then she goes to the ritual anyways, and Kem, who is totally the most Sundere character ever. <laughs> I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. Okay, I'm not, totally not beginning to like you. Nope, not at all. Damn it. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but he comes leaping in to attack her. Something she... I like you or anything, <laughs> right? Leaping in to attack her and big explosion and such. And Zash is lying there dead. You sort of stand up, and you confront. You look over at Kem. You're like, "Wow, Kem, you saved me!" And then Zash's voice comes out of Kem. Ah, sucks or <laughs> Kem's still in there because he's force resistant. <laughs> Right. So, Zash and Kem are sharing the same body. It's fucking hilarious. And she's like, wait, what? No! <laughs> <laughs> what the? But I, what? Oh, well, it's like a short, uh, an old 40k short story I read where a demon uh, tried to possess the, the first thing that picked up is uh, the artifact it was bound in, and it was a orc warlord. And got stuck. <laughs> now... Go and pick up the Gormar and eat it. Oh, why would you do that? I was hungry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it was just too. Oh my god, I could not stop laughing when that happened. I thought it was. I, I, I was expecting. I was sort of expecting the body swap thing. I was not expecting her to get stuck in Kem. And you hear her voice coming out of Kem. It was just. Oh my god. But the thing is that she's like the, immediately after. She's like, okay, well, fine. Then I'll just tear you to pieces with this body. <laughs> Why can't I attack you? Oh right, the Deshad is is, is bound to you. I can't. It can, he physically can't attack you. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> so she has no choice but to basically follow you and and not and basically be uh, be your follower at this point. Hilarious. And she's like set things up so that you know, she sets things up so that you 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 be promoted to, to a Lord of the Sith and right. all her like followers and such would be your would fo would come and follow you now because you know she was gonna die and she's gonna leave everything over to you because she totally wasn't gonna reveal that she'd switch bodies because she's not stupid she's really smart <laughs> but her plan is really fucking good right <laughs> because she's going to leave herself dead clearly of old age like the ritual failed or what have you right It's it's brilliant. Uh, I'm really enjoying the Sith storyline, honestly. Nice. Uh, I, I God, 
The Old Republic is a game... I love the storyline stuff in the game. The rest of the game is remarkably okay. <laughs> right. It's not It's not the, It's not. not the. a great MMO, but dear lord, the storyline stuff's really good. Well, it, it's, it's Bioware. Yeah. Uh, Bioware knows how to tell a story of nothing else, as long as EA keeps off their ass. Yeah, well... Looking at you, Dragon Age 2. Yep. Yeah... So, yeah. <laughs> and then last night I started up doing a uh, another playthrough of Star Control 2 because I hadn't played it in a while and decided that I wanted to play it again. Right. Also, Sketch basically is trying to convince me to do a, pl- a pl- playthrough of Star Control 3. <laughs> of course he is. <laughs> you can start doing Let's Play videos. It'll be great. <laughs> uh, that's sort of what I'm doing. I'm doing it for fun, but... I'm, you know, I'm like, I, I'm effectively doing. I'm, I'm recording the recording this playthrough of uh, Star Control Two and uploading it. So, oh, cool, awesome. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah, I got to the, I, I got to actually talk briefly. I got to do have the one of the first interactions with uh, the, uh, with the Urquan last night, uh, and nice. just it was again re- reiterated, re- reinforced exactly how awesome they are as villains. Very cool. God, it's just there is such a tra- there is the Urquan story is such a tragedy. It's just like oh my god, because they fought they 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 earned every bit of like you know they earned their sentience they earned their place in the galaxy. They be they come up from you know solitary ambush predators and were like a functioning useful happy part of a galactic society and were like generally good guys for the most part and people like respected them and then they were taken over by psych- by by these psychic, psychic codes death codes and forced to murder their the, the one race they considered friends and just like oh Fuck my you hypno toad <laughs> oh my god and they and I it's hard to blame them for basically coming out of that horribly psychologically scarred as a race and deciding never again <laughs> yeah i mean they take it too far and the core take it even further too far there will be no other sentient life other than Urquan. Um, it kind of limits the diversity. But you know what? Never mind. You're crazy. Yeah, I mean, they're nuts. The Korra are nuts. Oh, God. I love Star Control 2 so much. <laughs> uh, and it, for everything I've been reading, I've read over the years, it turns out like it's been an enormous influence on a lot of sci-fi games since then. Like, apparently the Mass Effect creators are all like, yeah, Star Control 2 was a huge influence on us. Uh, that doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Um, also, Mass Effect is really good up until the very end. Yeah, well, um, it's yeah. Like, it's like Steven Spielberg's AI syndrome. Awesome, 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 awesome! Why would you do that? Oh, yeah, Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, actually, uh, I speaking of, we're... Today, we're recording this the day one of this year's E3, actually, it turns out. Uh, mm. uh, and uh, EA, during EA's uh, thing, I got to, I watched some, of, watched some of it. I watched uh, EA's uh, presentation today. Uh, there's a Mass Effect 4 coming out. Um, I actually saw that. I haven't actually watched any of the videos, but I, I saw that like pop up on my, my things. I, from what I'm understanding, it's going to be taking place sometime after the ending of Mass Effect 3. Uh, and it's not going to be about Shepard. Good. Because, you know, uh, Shepard's dead. I, I, yeah, I don't know if you know us, but Shepard's dead. Spoiler <laughs> alert! Come on, he was as doomed as Spike Spiegel. <laughs> Spoilers! Spike's not dead. Yeah, he is. Spike's fucking dead. I know the creator of Cowboy Bebop has said you, the ending is open interpretation. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah, it... it that that would cheapen the the last episode if Spike turned out to be alive. Like, sorry, the, it works much better if he dies. <laughs> I agree. Well, the other thing is that if he survived, the only option from that point basically is taking over the syndicate. Yeah. Which is the exact opposite of what he wanted. Yeah, pretty much. So yeah. Be interesting to see what they do with with that though. And they also teased the uh, some stuff about uh, Dragon Age uh, Inquisition. 
Which I'm actually really interested in. I did read a little bit about that. Apparently it's going to be fucking ginormous. Um, you're going to be able to pick your, your your gender and your species and oh. your voice. for the, Wait, the wait, wait, wait. You'll be able to pick your species again? Yes. Thank fucking God. Um, four races, so I'm guessing human, dwarf, elf, and, uh, and Quinari. Okay. Sure. So I'm guessing they haven't announced that. If possible, I'm totally playing a Quinari so that I might gore people with my awesome horns. <laughs> what, Eric playing a giant monster? Never. That never happens. Why would I do that? Because you always play them. I'm not playing a giant monster in, uh, in Wildstar. I know, I'm Eric. a it's... small monster. I know, and the Draken are there. The Draken are there, and they're awesome, and, and... but there's just something about being a space given. I'm, I'm just I, I'm still flabbergasted that you're that you're not playing a dragon. Dragon are right there. I know, I know, but <laughs> okay. One of the quest givers in, in, that keeps on popping up in Wild Star for the Dominion is Mondo Zax. He's the 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 chu he's the chua in charge of, of their their research uh, their their research division, and some of the quotes he has are fucking hilarious. Science without violence is boring. That's good. I like it. Things go wrong, experiments fail, subjects die! And then there's the bad news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a mad scientist. <laughs> oh, God. So, yeah. Um, i trying to think of anything else that's sort of come up. Um, other gaming stuff. Oh, God. Yeah, I mean it's most of it, you know, role playing yeah. games for me, you know. Yeah, I, I like I said, I watched uh, the the third Madoka Magica movie because the first two are just rehashes of the series, and holy crap, that's good. Like I'm like, ah, how do you go forward with this? I'm curious. Oh, that's how you do it. Oh, oh well, yeah, true to form, guys, true to form. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I'm, I don't know, I'm sort of, I, I'm still sort of torn about Dragon Age, the next Dragon Age. I, I was so disappointed in Dragon Age 2 that I'm just really, Yeah, really... yeah, Dragon Age 2 is one of those games that I tried really hard to like, um, because it has a lot of potential. And normally what happens when I see a lot of failed potential like that, I end up hating it. I don't hate Dragon Age 2, I just sort of, I'm disappointed. I I love it. I honestly do. the ga The gameplay is better than Dragon Age or than than Origins, but other than that, yeah, it's just the gameplay is a, a vast improvement. Which which honestly, I think is probably what saves the game for me. The gameplay is better. The graphics are. It's got better graphics tech. But other than that, it's inferior for me in every way. Yeah. And I. I don't know. Varric was kind of cool. I mean, he was no Morgan, but he was kind of cool. Yeah. Varric was the dwarf. Yeah, I know. I know who he was. I like Varric. Varric was awesome. Yes. Yeah. I don't know, just the levels of, of stupid in the writing and two just pissed me yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. Everybody was dumb. In the, third, in the third chapter. Oh my god. So stupid. I was like, really, guys? Yeah. Really? I still can't get over the, the fight with the... the the, the leader of the mage circle. Like, aha! We've been slaughtering them. We've got them at a choke point. We can put mages up there in the rafters. We can funnel them right down to the kill zone, and we, we can hold them here with our, our kick-ass melee team. We are good to go. Oh, we're doomed! No, we're not. Did you just hear the plan I described to you? I'm going to turn to blood magic. Why? We've got it covered! Blah! Monster time! <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> it's like why, why? Why did you go monster time? We we had this covered. Because every... Aha, I have the artifact. What artifact? The one from chapter one. That was important. <sighs> Actually, I'll be honest. That reveal was. Oh yeah, I should have seen that coming. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, that made everything make sense. <laughs> that made everything involving her make sense. Like, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. This explains a lot. And that explains where that stupid sword she's had came from. 
Yeah, that they actually had in her back from that point forward that you just didn't, weren't paying attention to. That was actually okay, sort of. It's more that the you go through all the trouble of getting the artifact and then it disappears completely from the storyline up until that reveal. Yeah, I know. I hated that game. I hate that game so much. Ugh. A lot of potential with that game. Just all of it not lived up to. Squandered. Squandered, Squandered left and yes. right. Thank you. And that's why I... Grr. Grumble, grumble, grumble. That game is Sucker Punch, is what it is. Yeah. That, a, a lot of potential, a lot of good ideas, a lot of it squandered or done poorly. Yeah. Uh, Rax in the chat brings to the point, does anyone notice that every single mage falls to blood magic when they have any problem in Dragon Age 2? Yes. That's actually explained in the game if you go to all the find all the little lore bits in the game. Because it turns out that whatever the city's name, and I forget, I don't really care, is laid out like a giant summoning circle. It's laid out by the Taventers to be a gigantic magic amplifier. I remember fig f figuring that out and not needing to look at, at uh, whatchamacallit. But yeah, I figured, oh, this is a, this is a giant circle. I'm willing to bet it's a magic circle. <laughs> and, and, and it's all focused on the tower in the middle, which is where they're keeping the mages. Yep. The entire place is designed to channel the power of blood magic, because that's what the Taventers do. Yeah, I remember go, putting two and two together. The city is a giant circle, and it's an old to uh, Venter holdout. I bet this is bad. <laughs> so the fact that the t that the Templars are keeping the mages locked up in the dead center of this to Venter blood magic circle amplifying circle yeah, can't it, have good effects. Did the Templars not do any research whatsoever? No, because the Templars are morons, the... like everybody in Dragon Age. Like honestly, I'm sort of at the point where I'm kind of rooting for the uh, for the uh, what's Machigi the, uh, the can't remember the name of the, the bad guys also the dark spawn. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of stupid in Dragon Age. I mean, it's not quite level with me in Battlestar Galactica the, the re reboot where I was rooting for the heat death of the universe because I wanted <laughs> both sides to lose. But you know, it's like oh my god, I don't like anybody in the show. I did kind of like that show for a while, but it's, yeah, it, it got to a point where I was like, really? Really? And the Cylons have a plan. No, they don't. They don't have a plan. You keep making it up as you go along. The, Cyl the Cylons had a plan, the writers didn't. <laughs> but yeah, the problem with the whole sort of lore things, explaining the whole sort of, you know, magic circle thing, they really should have done a better job of making that more obvious. Yeah. Like, uh, because that would have explained a lot and made the payoff at the end of the game better. And honestly, they might have done that in Act 3 if they'd had more time to put the game out. Yeah, it's obvious that it was rushed through very quickly. I don't know if that was EA or Bioware or, or what have you, but someone someone obviously rushed that through long before it was finished. Yep, I'd agree with that. Uh, Rax in the chat asks if there are no, there's no fuck everything option Dragon Age 2. No, there are no choices at the end of Dragon Age 2. No, there's no choices. Like, you think you think Mass Effect's choices are bad. Mass Effect 3's choices are bad. Dragon Age 2 had no choices whatsoever. Nothing you do has any effect on the plot. Because you, you do technically, you have the choice to decide with the Templars or decide with the Mages. It doesn't actually change the outcome of anything. Yeah. It literally doesn't change the outcome. At all. You still have to fight, um, you, still, you have to fight Meredith, and you have to you have to fight Meredith, and you have to fight Orsino, yeah. and the 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 war between the Templars and the Mages happens. There's no, nothing changes. And Anders is dumb. And the Anders is part of the reason nothing changes. It's a shame. I kind of liked him in uh, in Awakenings. Uh, well, yeah. But, you know, whatever. Yeah, well, he he was driven kind of nuts. Yeah, yeah fair enough. He's he's got a demon in his head. Spirit it of order, a demon totally, at first. Totally a spirit of order. Totally different. Yeah. I, I'm a spirit of justice. Except being stuck in this head with this stupid human has turned me into a spirit of vengeance. <laughs> uh. 
So yeah, I'm not looking forward to Dragon Age uh, Inquisitor. I, I, I'll, I'll probably pick it up when it goes on sale. Um, Mass Effect 4, I am looking forward to. I love, love, love Mass Effect up until the last 15 minutes of 3. Yeah. Like, really, Godchild? Really? <laughs> you're not gonna... Really, game, you're not gonna let me refute God, the Godchild's friggin' uh, thesis with evidence right out the fucking window? <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Did I mention on my first playthrough with that, I basically told the, the godchild off and I wasn't going to make a choice? <sighs> yep. No, your choices are all dumb. Well, then the cycle continues. The end. What? <sighs> yeah, well, you know. Uh, yeah. So, anyways, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do have to say, I'm, I'm sort of, you know, I, there's not a lot of games coming out that I'm particularly looking forward to that I know about because I'm really not, haven't really been, I don't really yeah. pay a lot of attention to what's coming out as a general rule of thumb because it's, um, Watch Dogs looks like it might be fun, but I'm totally not spending full price for that. Uh, from everything um, I've heard, it's very, very, very buggy. Yeah, exactly why. <laughs> um, and it's basically, it's basically Grand Theft Auto with with, with, hack, hacking. with hacking mini games. And you know, Grand Theft Auto is fun enough, but honestly, uh, their trailers last year, I I thought going in, like I thought about it, I, from what I saw them, I was like, ooh, this sounds like because when they revealed the whole multiplayer thing, I was like, oh, cool, you'd be able to like work together as teams and do crazy stuff together. No, it's PvP stuff. You see, I would have, yeah, if it would have been like you can work together as teams or foil other people's plans to further your own, so this big like living world kind of deal, but no, no, it's just PvP. Yay. And, you know, I enjoy me some PvP, but... Yeah, well, anyways, uh... I'm trying to think of some, like, something more cheery to end on than my frustration with video games. Chua! Adorable little murder. Actually, balls. I do have one thing I'm looking forward to coming up, and it's nothing not not new game or anything like that. It's that uh, Asheron's Call is going to be going by to play. Cool. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, they did their last con last actual content update uh, a couple months ago, so they're not going to be doing any more content updates. But you'll be able to buy into the game and then play for free after that forever until they eventually shut the servers down. Although they're also apparently yeah. releasing the uh, server code and source code to people, to they're, they're basically putting it, allowing people to buy and run their own servers and such if they want to. That's pretty cool. That's actually really cool of them. Yeah, they're making it officially a, like a thing that you can do. That's actually really cool. I'm like, you know, that's actually a really cool idea. That, that's a that's a stand up move. Good job, Turbine. Yeah. <laughs> Oh God, yeah. So if only I'm, other uh, if only other MMOs did that, they decided to shutter things. Looking at UNC Soft. Yeah. Not that I'm bitter. I'm very, very no, bitter. No, you bitter about UNC Soft? Never. Very, oh, so very bitter. And it's a shame because Champions might have be better mechanically than than City. City's world was so much more rich and vibrant. And part of this piece is around so long, but. And th even like from the start out, because I played, started playing City right around the time Villains came out. Yeah. And yeah, it was just a vastly more rich and vibrant world than, than Champions. Like they're, I got it more is what I'm saying. Something about Champions feels very much like, feels kind of bland. World well, I, I know, I know why it's because it's the Marvel universe that the serial numbers filed off. It is. I mean that's largely what the I mean that's partially a no, no small part of what the Champions universe actually is. I mean it's largely influenced right. by the Marvel universe. That's fine. Um, that works better for a tabletop role playing game where the game master can change things. Yes. That doesn't work in an MMO as well, unless they want to change things more and they don't. Yeah, I mean Arachnos is one of the coolest villain groups. Seriously, like 
they, they were aesthetically interesting. Um, they seem to have a lot this weird, th this weird sort of anarcho-fascist thing going on where you obeyed absolutely until you didn't have to, which they somehow made work. <laughs> It made more sense than it does in the Old Republic, is what I'm saying. Yeah, well, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Freedom Corps was, was interesting, and, and totally played to, to type, being shield with spandex. That thing is, they really were, like, you, you don't realize exactly how, like, they're, they had the, some of the dark edges they have until you actually, like... Until you play villain side, you right. see the shit they go up to. You're like, wait, uh, like you read like the info text on the sh on the uh, on the uh, the uh, the freedom the freedom core uh, flamethrower guys. Yeah, you're like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Huh. Okay. And then they had the actual uh, they had the stones to actually kill off statesmen. Yeah. They uh, they off their Superman analog, and they actually killed him. Yeah, no Although, Kryptonian hypersleep for you. <laughs> the one thing they were that was so, that was going to happen storyline wise that would sort of allow them to quote bring back statesmen, and that's in massive air quotes, is the whole resolution to the whole Praetorian plotline mm. was going to end with uh, Emperor Cole eventually basically having to 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 as a way to sort of redeem himself to a certain degree. Eventually, sort of, ta uh, sort of taking up Statesman's mantle for for for, for Earth Prime. Right. Because the whole fallout beat over the whole incarnate stuff. Mm. It, I was reading through, and it, basically every year the uh, the Positron and the various uh, developers for City of Heroes do an AMA about lore stuff and where they were going and other lore background stuff. It's really fascinating stuff. And they had a lot of plans. Everything is a nemesis plot. Not everything is a nemesis plot. <laughs> Two tips that showed up during the loading screen. <laughs> <What's the best? laughs> <Everything. laughs> I miss that game so much. Uh, well, I think that's going to do it for tonight, though. Yep. Hope you all enjoyed the show. Uh, it wasn't, you know... I, uh, focused. Focused or anything like that. We? We're never focused, but we're less focused than usual this week. So, uh, thanks for watching. Hope you all had fun. We'll see you guys soon. Uh, hope we'll be back next week, very most likely, with hopefully an actual topic. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah, I know. I'll try to think of something during the week. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Take care and have a wonderful evening. Oh, I should do the end of, end of show spiel, shouldn't I? Oh yeah, you should do that. <laughs> wow, almost forgot. Uh, <laughs> okay, dude. When I start thinking about that. Uh, then, then you, you know you're out of it. Cause... I'm out of it. I've completely forgotten it. Yeah. So uh, we usually save time at the end of each show to answer viewer questions. We didn't have any this week, so we didn't. Uh, but if you do have a question you'd like answered on the show, or if you got feedback for us, both yeah, constructive criticism is definitively welcome. Or if you got show topic suggestions, we love those. We love those to pieces. Uh, this week's show is an example of why we love those to pieces. We, we so love those to pieces. <laughs> Uh, you can send them to us. We have an email address. Our email address is surlygrognards at yahoo.com S-U-R-L-Y-G-R-O-G-N-A-R-D-S at yahoo.com Or you can hit us up on our forums, which you can find at mechagm.forumer.com Or if you really feel the need, you can hit me up on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at mechagm. I will usually tweet out when the show's about to start and uh, or, you know, if uh, we're going to have to delay or skip a week or what have you. Uh, so keep an eye on my Twitter for stuff like that. Um, and we record the show every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern here on twitch.tv slash mechagm and you can find earlier recordings of the show on my blog which you can find at mechagm.blogspot.com that's all of it right? I think so sweet I think I wrote it all <laughs> thanks for watching guys we'll see you guys next week bye